Thank you. So what I'm going to do today is speak on SGLT2 inhibitors, type 2 diabetes, and heart failure. So let me start this. Can you all see my screen? Yes, sir. Okay. All right. So when you look at uh, type 2 diabetes, the hyperglycemia is a combination of several uh, pathophysiological abnormalities. Now, these include uh, impaired insulin secretion from the beta cells, a decreased incretin effect, increased lipolysis from the adipocytes, uh, increased glucose reabsorption, decreased glucose uptake in the muscle or insulin resistance in the muscle, increased hepatic glucose production from the liver or hepatic insulin resistance, and uh, finally, neurotransmitter dysfunction that may contribute to increased appetite and other factors contributing to hyperglycemia. So this slide, as Dr. Ralph DeFronzo has summed this up, uh, shows you the, the mechanisms, really, by which you see hyperglycemia, as well as see the effect of various drugs used for type 2 diabetes in terms of their site of action. But what's also important here is inflammation. Uh, inflammation, both vascular, systemic, uh, as well as inflammation in the uh, liver and skeletal muscle, adipocyte, all contributes to this pathophysiological abnormality uh, and therefore plays a very important role uh, in type 2 diabetes in the pathogenesis of hyperglycemia. And finally, there is vascular insulin resistance that contributes to endothelial dysfunction and uh, cardiovascular uh, risk in type 2 diabetes. So the SGLT2 inhibitors really work uh, uh, to affect uh, the reabsorption of glucose, uh, sodium glucose uh, exchange in the kidney, uh, in the uh, tubule, and, uh, and thereby uh, reduce the glucotoxicity uh, by increasing renal glycosuria, the hyperglycemia gets better, and the glucotoxicity, then the reversal of glucotoxicity improves uh, in uh, insulin secretion, uh, as well as insulin sensitivity in the skeletal muscle and the liver. And that mechanism was shown many years ago uh, in st early studies done by Dr. DeFranzo and Dr. Rossetti from San Antonio. So the American Diabetes Association Standards of Care 2022 now says first-line therapy depends on comorbidities, patient-centered treatment factors, including cost and access, and management needs, and generally includes metformin, and a comprehensive lifestyle modification, but recommended independently of your baseline A1C, A1C target, or metformin use is the use of SGLT2 inhibitors in heart failure, as well as in uh, atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease, uh, indicators of high risk where GLP-1s with proven cardiovascular benefit are recommended or SGLT2 with proven cardiovascular benefit. And finally, it's chronic kidney disease, CKD and albuminuria, more than 200 milligrams per gram creatinine, or CKD without albuminuria, but EGFR less than 60. Again, SGLT2 inhibitors with primary evidence of reducing CKD progression are recommended, uh, or GLP-1 receptor agonists with proven cardiovascular benefit if SGLT2s are not tolerated or contraindicated. So clearly, heart failure is a major indication in patients with type 2 diabetes to use a SGLT2 inhibitor. Now, when we look at this recommendation and compare it with metformin, the efficacy of SGLT2 in inhibitors is intermediate in terms of glucose lowering compared to metformin. Uh, 
they do not cause hypoglycemia. Uh, there's some weight loss associated with it as you lose glucose in the urine. Uh, cardiovascular effects, uh, again, these two, empagliflozin and canagliflozin, have been found to reduce the uh, MACE uh, in their studies, and I'll show you that. And when we look at heart failure, uh, all the four that are currently approved for use in the United States, EMPA, CANA, DAPA, and ertugloflozacine are clearly beneficial in heart failure. Uh, cost is high in the U.S. for the use of SGLT2 inhibitors compared to metformin, which is generic. And uh, when we look at uh, the, uh, well, they are both oral, but renal effects, uh, clearly CANA, uh, EMPA, and DAPA have been shown to be of benefit in patients with uh, chronic kidney disease or albuminuria. And uh, again, uh, dosing considerations, uh, contraindicated EGFR less than 30 is metformin. And with the SGLT2 inhibitors, uh, again, each individual uh, drug uh, label may tell you with what to use on what dose. But the bottom line is we are using SGLT2 inhibitors till a EGFR of uh, close to 25 uh, uh, in patients with type 2 diabetes and uh, either chronic kidney disease or microalbuminuria. And then the side effects have to be kept in mind. Uh, you know, they should be discontinued uh, before any scheduled surgery about 72 hours before because of the potential risk of DKA. We do see patients who go in for surgery where the drug was not discontinued and uh, they went into euglycemic DKA postoperatively. Uh, and uh, again, uh, uh, euglycemic DKA uh, is a problem seen with these agents. Uh, again, more in type 1, uh, but we do see it in type 2 also. Uh, and, uh, and this has to be kept in mind and patients explain the risk of euglycemic DKA, the symptoms and uh, the help that they should seek. Uh, as well as monitoring of urinary ketones. Uh, the risk of bone fracture, uh, again, is increased with CANA, really hasn't been seen with others. And of course, genitourinary infections uh, are, a site, are an adverse event uh, that has been noted uh, with these drugs, uh, both vaginal yeast infection, balanitis, and urinary tract infections. Uh, and finally, risk of volume depletion, uh, hypotension, especially when used with diuretics. Uh, one has to be careful. Uh, and uh, some increase in LDL cholesterol uh, and uh, risk of fornius gangrene, which is a recent addition to the FDA uh, warning label. So these side effects or adverse events must be kept in mind when you're prescribing these drugs. So why does the American Diabetes Association recommend uh, SGLT2 inhibitors in patients with chronic kidney disease or cardiovascular disease. And the initial trials, uh, Empareg, Canvas, and Declartemi, uh, Canvas and Empareg were the first two with the results uh, that came out. And these were all patients with established vascular complications uh, or risk factors uh, in Canvas and Empareg. Uh, whereas in declared to me, these were all patients with high risk for cardiovascular events. The primary endpoint was MACE, which is cardiovascular death, non-fatal MI, non-fatal stroke. And uh, the results of all three trials are available. And that's summarized here. Uh, so SGLT2 inhibitors reduce cardiovascular risk. Uh, MACE came down 14% and was significant. Uh, in Empareg, so was it significant with the identical reduction in canvas. With DAPA, MACE did not change significantly. Uh, cardiovascular death uh, reduced with EMPA almost 38%, with canvas 
And with the declared Timmy DAPA study, you saw a reduction in a composite of cardiovascular death and hospitalization for heart failure, which was really driven by hospitalization for heart failure, a reduction in that. Clearly, heart failure hospitalization across all three studies came down significantly, as you can see here. So in terms of heart failure, uh, these drugs have a clear benefit uh, in patients uh, with heart failure uh, in terms of reducing hospitalization for heart failure. Now, let's look at Canvas and Empareg uh, separately. Uh, and what you see here in red is Empareg and blue is Canvas. MACE came down identical in both studies, but with important differences. Uh, cardiovascular death uh, was much more reduced, as you saw with uh, EMPA uh, compared to CANA. And uh, non-fatal MI uh, was reduced somewhat in both groups, but stroke tended to increase in EMPA-REG and in uh, CANVAS uh, came down a, a small degree here. Uh, so in bottom line, the MACE came down with both, uh, but this was largely driven by cardiovascular death uh, and uh, some effect of reducing non-fatal MI. But uh, in CANVAS, it was almost equally uh, cardiovascular death, non-fatal MI, non-fatal stroke. Hospitalization for heart failure came down significantly with both uh, EMPA and CANA. Cardiovascular death or hospitalization for heart failure when combined together, you can see here a much more effect with EMPA than CANA. All-cause mortality came down with EMPA and progression to macroalbuminuria uh, was significantly reduced with both and so was the renal composite, uh, which favored SGLT2 inhibitors in both cases. And that's... Uh, the results from Empareg, EMPA slowed the decline in EGFR in these patients. As you can see here, this is 10 milligram EMPA, this is 25, uh, and this is placebo. So both 10 and 25 uh, slowed the decline in EGFR uh, over uh, 192 weeks, whereas with placebo, there was a steady decline in EGFR from almost uh, eight, uh, 76 down uh, into the uh, 70 or 68 range. Now, when we look at DAPA uh, in the uh, 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 in the clinical trial, uh, you can declare to me. You can see here 17,000 odd patients with type two diabetes. Uh, established cardiovascular disease, 6,974. But multiple risk factors was the predominant group, 10,186, without established cardiovascular disease. And DAPA 10 milligram versus placebo. Uh, and again, with follow-up visits, primary endpoint, MACE, cardiovascular death, MI, stroke, and uh, again, uh, the uh, second endpoint was cardiovascular death uh, or hospitalization for heart failure. Uh, and when you look at the results, cardiovascular death, hospitalization for heart failure came down significantly. Uh, with MACE, uh, uh, it was non-inferior, but not superior to placebo. Uh, and most of this was driven by a reduction in hospitalization for heart failure, uh, MI, uh, small reduction, ischemic stroke, no reduction, cardiovascular death, no change, and non-cardiovascular death, a little bit of reduction here. And secondly, you saw for you know the renal composite, which was a forty percent decrease in EGFR to uh, less than sixty, end stage renal disease or renal or cardiovascular death again came down twenty four percent, as you can see here very clearly. So important benefits again on renal outcomes and hospitalization for heart failure, and these are results from. Patients uh, in the DAPA CKD study, 
4,304 participants, EGFR 25 to 75, uh, with a urine albumin to, uh, to creatinine excretion of 200 to 5,000, uh, DAPA 10 or placebo primary outcome, composite of sustained decline in EGFR of at least 50%, end-stage kidney disease or death from renal or cardiovascular causes. And the secondary outcomes were composite kidney outcomes of a sustained decline in EGFR of at least 50%, end-stage kidney disease or death from renal causes, and a composite cardiovascular outcome defined as hospitalization for heart failure or death from cardiovascular causes and death from any cause. So these were patients with chronic kidney disease, but did not necessarily uh, have to have diabetes. So, so this included patients without a diagnosis of diabetes. And when you see in the DAPA CKD study, uh, the primary outcome was reduced significantly, uh, as shown in this slide, by almost uh, 39%. Uh, and then the renal specific composite outcome uh, was again uh, reduced significantly. Composite of death from cardiovascular causes or hospitalization for heart failure uh, came down significantly uh, as shown here. And death from any cause uh, came down significantly in the DAPA CKD study. So patients with chronic kidney disease, EGFR 25 to 75, uh, as well as uh, 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 urine albumin to creatinine ratio of 200 uh, or more, uh, clearly the drug was reducing the hospitalization for heart failure, as well as having a protective effect in terms of renal outcomes. The Virtis cardiovascular study looked at EMPA, ER2, and placebo, uh, sorry, ER2-5, ER2-15, and placebo. And the primary endpoint, again, was MACE. Uh, MACE has always been the primary endpoint in uh, these studies and secondary outcomes, cardiovascular death, composite of cardiovascular death, heart failure, and renal composite, which is renal death, dialysis transplant, or doubling of serum creatinine. And uh, when you see here, uh, these were all patients uh, more than 40 years of age, type 2 di diabetes, uh, again, established atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease involving these coronary cerebrovascular and or peripheral arterial systems, uh, and uh, uh, obviously type 1 diabetics uh, or patients with a history of ketoacidosis were excluded from these studies. So when you look at Virtis CV, MACE again did not change uh, with ertoglofloxacin versus placebo uh, and cardiovascular death, as you can see here, really did not change significantly, but hospitalization for heart failure came down significantly and the composite of cardiovascular death hospitalization for heart failure uh, was small decrease. But the major effect was, again, on hospitalization for heart failure. The renal composite came down, just didn't reach significance, as you can see in this uh, uh, data here. The p-value was 0.08. And finally, with CANA and renal events in diabetes and established diabetic nephropathy, uh, CANA uh, was really uh, studied here in 3,700 type 2 diabetics with diabetic nephropathy, EGFR 30 to 90, and macroalbuminuria, receiving standard of care plus ACE or ARBs. So they had already been optimized on ACE or ARBs. Uh, and the primary endpoint time from first occurrence of event in primary composite endpoint, uh, end-stage kidney disease, doubling of serum creatinine, renal or cardiovascular death. And uh, the secondary was uh, uh, the uh, first occurrence of an event in the cardiovascular composite endpoint, that is cardiovascular death, non-fatal MI, non-fatal stroke, hospitalization for heart failure or unstable angina. And uh, when you see here, 
uh, in this slide, uh, you can see very clearly the primary composite, which is really renal or cardiovascular death and stage kidney disease. Uh, uh, you can see here that that came down very significantly. Cardiovascular death came down just about near significance. Uh, 22 percent uh, uh, reduction right here. So notice previously we were not seeing a reduction in cardiovascular death uh, uh, other than in with EMPA, but in this study uh, we can see clearly that those with chronic kidney disease, you saw a reduction in cardiovascular death. Uh, and then end-stage kidney disease doubling of sen uh, serum creatinine or renal death came down very significantly, as well as the risk of dialysis kidney transplant uh, or renal death. So the bottom line here is in patients with chronic kidney disease, you have important benefits on the progression of chronic kidney disease. And in the credence study, uh, you saw a uh, uh, reduction in cardiovascular death that was of borderline significance. Uh, and uh, so in the CANA credence study, this is the urine albumin to creatinine ratio, as you can see here. And uh, that uh, is, you know, reduced with CANA. Uh, as would be expected, and the change in EGFR is shown here. This is CANA, this is placebo. So the decline in EGFR was uh, uh, reduced uh, with CANA versus placebo. So summarizing as a meta-analysis data from these studies, subgroup analysis by atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease, uh, as is shown here. Uh, this was a combined meta-analysis presented at the ADA. So if you have atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease uh, versus no atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease, the presence of atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease leads to, in a meta-analysis, uh, some reduction in uh, in MACE, uh, about a 10% reduction, whereas no atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease, you only saw a reduction uh, in, uh, in the credence study in MACE. So really not much of a benefit on MACE, uh, the only exception being patients with chronic kidney disease, High, they're high risk for cardiovascular disease, and MACE did come down in credence. But otherwise, the effect on MACE is really, uh, other than Empareg and Canvas, the other studies uh, did not show a benefit in MACE. Now, time to cardiovascular death. Again, in Empareg came down, Canvas, some reduction, the rest, uh, really not much of an effect except in credence again, patients with diabetes type 2 and chronic kidney disease, a reduction in cardiovascular death because patients with chronic kidney disease uh, and type 2 diabetes are high risk for cardiovascular disease and cardiovascular death. And in that focus subgroup, uh, you see a benefit in reducing cardiovascular death. But heart failure across the board, whether you the patients had established atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease or no atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease across the board came down very clearly by 30 to 40 percent with all these studies. And so the major effect is really on heart failure and renal complication. And that's what the meta-analysis supports. The use, prioritize the use of SGLT2 inhibitors independent of glucose control considerations. It doesn't matter what the baseline A1C is. It didn't matter what the target A1C is. In patients with type 2 diabetes, with or at high risk for cardiovascular and renal complications, because the effects on heart hospitalization for heart failure were most consistent across the trials and greatest magnitude of benefit is the reduction in risk for hospitalization for heart failure and kidney disease progression. 
And this is a nice summary of all these trials, uh, which was published in BMJ Diabetes, uh, the uh, uh, review uh, published from here at Baylor by Dr. Virani and Dr. Navneetan. Uh, really a nice table showing you the outcomes, the primary endpoint, the kidney outcomes, uh, and uh, and the results all in one nice table summarized here. Uh, Canvas credence, Emperag, declared to me, uh, DAPA CKD study, uh, all these uh, I, I've talked about, uh, and then Vertis cardiovascular. Uh, the only study I didn't look uh, talk about is CODE because sort of glyphosate is still not FDA approved for treatment in uh, diabetes. And again, here you saw a reduction in hospitalization for heart failure and uh, uh, in the study, as well as renal protection. And finally, SGLT2 inhibitors for heart failure, irrespective of the ejection fraction or a diagnosis of diabetes, both DAPA uh, in patients with heart failure and reduced ejection fraction, and EMPA in the EMPRA reduced trial, uh, 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 looking at cardiovascular and renal outcomes with EMPA in heart failure, irrespective of the diagnosis of diabetes, so DAPA heart failure and EMPRA reduced, uh, showed uh, a benefit. And that's shown in this table here. Uh, what you can see here is cardiovascular death, hospitalization for heart failure, DAPA heart failure, emperor reduced 25% reduction, first heart failure hospitalization, 30% reduction, renal composite endpoint, 30% or 29 here and 50%, and some reduction in cardiovascular death. But again, the major reduction is in hospitalization, first hospitalization for heart failure and the renal composite. And these were patients with a reduced ejection fraction of less than 40%, class three, two, class three, class four heart failure with or without diabetes, which is why these drugs are now being used by cardiologists in non-diabetic patients with heart failure uh, and of course, in patients with diabetes, as the ADA recommends. And then in patients with preserved ejection fraction, uh, the uh, emperor preserved showed the primary endpoint cardiovascular death hospitalization for heart failure. Uh, and again, it reduced the combined risk of cardiovascular death or hospitalization for heart failure in patients with even preserved EF, regardless of the presence or absence of diabetes. And the same study delivered trial with uh, uh, patients with uh, preserved or mildly reduced EF uh, with DAPA, the Formal results are still uh, awaited, uh, but it did show again a reduction in hospitalization uh, for heart failure. And finally, preserved heart failure, DAPA improved symptoms, physical limitations in heart patients with heart failure with preserved EF, as uh, uh, this study published last year or so uh, showed uh, in Nature Medicine. So, Coming down to the bottom, we see a clear benefit in heart failure. Not much of a benefit on MACE other than with EMPA and uh, CANA. So what is the mechanism by which these drugs have a myocardial benefit uh, in terms of myocardial uh, e ejection fraction uh, or myocardial energetics? Uh, and I'm sure you all, all heard by now the preceding lecture by Dr. Sundar Mudalier in another room where he talks about his hypothesis. And the bottom line is patients with type 2 diabetes have uh, increased fat oxidation, decreased glucose oxidation, uh, decreased P2O ratio, which is basically energy efficiency. Uh, P2A ratio reflects the number of molecules of ATP produced per atom of uh, glu oxygen reduced by the mitochondrial electron transport system uh, and uh, decreased cardiac work efficiency. 
which is why patients with type 2 diabetes have much more heart failure and decreased myocardial contractility. And there's an increased incidence and progression of heart failure. So a type 2 diabetic heart uh, has these problems. When you treat with SGLT2, you reduce the fat oxidation, increase glucose oxidation, but you increase the formation of ketones, beta-hydroxybutyrate, and that is used by the heart for energy, increase P2AO ratio, or you have more ATP production and increase cardiac work efficacy, improved myocardial contractility, and a reduced progression of heart failure. Again, this is really a hypothesis. Uh, we still don't have a proven uh, infusion of ketones in type 2 diabetics clinical trial showing us a clear benefit in ejection fraction. And the studies are being done. Uh, and so can a shift in fuel energetics explain the beneficial cardiorenal outcomes in the EMPIREG study? Uh, a unifying hypothesis. And again, this is, as I said, uh, 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 Dr. Mudalia, Dr. Eli Peranini proposed this and postulated that cardiorenal benefits of EMPA are due to shift in myocardial and renal fuel metabolism away from fat and glucose, which are energy inefficient in a type 2 diabetic heart and kidney towards uh, energy efficient superfuel ketone body, which improves myocardial renal work efficiency and function. So again, still a hypothesis. But we went back to the lab and we said, well, let's look at other mechanisms. And in a model, in a uh, mouse model of diabetic cardiomyopathy, what we found was, and again, these are animal studies, that SGLT2 inhibition with DAPA reduced the activation of the inflammasome. So myocardial inflammation comes down and there is some reduction in myocardial triglyceride and, uh, and, uh, and clearly the left ventricular ejection fraction in these BTPR mice uh, diabetic cardiomyopathy model uh, is improved. So DAPA attenuated the activation of the inflammasome fibrosis, myocardial fibrosis, and deterioration in LVEF. Uh, adding a DPP-4 inhibitor to DAPA did not result in a greater effect on these uh, on myocardial fibrosis. And these anti-inflammatory, anti-fibrotic effects as we showed in in vitro, are direct of DAPA, independent of SGLT2, SGLT1, and glucose lowering, because there's no SGLT2 in the heart. And were re replicated when we uh, had an in vitro model of cultured cardiofibroblasts. We found that DAPA basically uh, uh, augmented EMPK phosphorylation. Uh, in cardiofibroblasts. So what is AMPK? A key molecule responsible for fat oxidation in the heart, in the liver, uh, other organs, uh, and uh, uh, AMPK phosphorylation uh, was significantly augmented by DAPA directly. Uh, and that the effect of DAPA on LPS-induced inflammasome activation was blocked by using compound C or AMPK inhibitor, and uh, these results could be replicated by an AMPK activator. So we conclude that there's a reduction in inflammation, a reduction in fibrosis in the heart, and that these effects are direct of DAPA and are AMPK dependent, and you actually uh, increase fat oxidation, probably reduce uh, myocardial triglyceride, and have better cardiac uh, efficiency. Well, we all know that metformin has an uh, effect on AMPK activation. So do we see the same with metformin? In general, metformin is contraindicated in patients with heart failure. Why? Because you increase in patients with heart failure, uh, there's tissue hypoxia, increased risk of uh, lactic acidosis. But several studies 
have looked at metformin in patients with uh, mild, mild to moderate heart failure. And what you can see here is these studies have shown some benefit with metformin uh, in patients with heart failure, including one from here at Baylor by Dr. David Aguilar, which showed a significant uh, improvement in terms of reduced mortality in heart failure patients. So mortality did come down uh, in this meta-analysis of heart failure patients, and this was published in the annals some time ago. And secondly, the same AMPK activation is taking place in the liver with SGLT2 inhibitors. And this is a study uh, that was published uh, in a small number of patients where they did biopsies and treated NASH uh, in patients with type 2 diabetes with empagliflozacine. You see the nice uh, 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 fatty vacuoles right here, uh, some inflammation and fibrosis. And after treatment, you see a marked reduction in the steatosis, as you can see here, and some reduction in inflammation and fibrosis. So just as you're reducing triglycerides in the myocardium, you're reducing uh, triglyceride in the liver by the same mechanism and reducing inflammation and, uh, and larger studies with biopsies obviously need to be done in patients with NASH uh, to uh, really uh, start using them. I know there are some studies were done in India, but uh, I think we need a large clinical trial to really look at this. But at the same time, you need to look at myocardial uh, triglycerides also in treat treating heart failure patients with uh, SGLT2 inhibitors to see if there's a reduction in myocardial triglyceride because fatty heart and fatty liver uh, although independent, uh, may be uh, major uh, problems in patients with type 2 diabetes. So the last unanswered question remains, why no effect on MACE or a small effect on MACE, but such a large effect on heart failure? So do these drugs have anti-atherosclerotic effects? We saw effect on MACE with Empareg and Canna. Again, the effect with EMPA was largely driven by reduction in cardiovascular death. Stroke actually uh, did not ben benefit much in any of the clinical trials other than in, uh, in the uh, CANVAS study. Uh, so what's going on here? Is there an effect on atherosclerosis? And that's an under-recognized or unanswered uh, question uh, regarding SGLT2 inhibitors and anti-atherosclerotic effects. There's a clear effect on the myocardium in terms of heart failure, uh, but the anti-atherosclerotic effects are unclear. Studies in animals do show uh, 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 improvement in endothelial dysfunction, uh, but uh, that's still an open question, which is why the ADA says in terms of atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease, uh, they, uh, they basically uh, uh, propose using CANA or EMPA, but none of the others, uh, and really uh, focusing on either using GLP-1 receptor agonists, which have a clear benefit in terms of MACE, uh, versus SGLT2 inhibitors, uh, where this effect is still uh, potentially uh, uh, an unanswered question. So I'll be happy to answer any questions. Thank you.